Fellas, I know we've talked about this exotic way too much already. But with the most recent update, Bungie actually enabled Gurf Falcon's Heartbreak, which is the new Hunter Exotic this season for Season of the Plunder. And let me just say, this is the best Hunter Exotic in the game, or at least for Void Hunters. It quite literally changes TTK values for multiple archetypes. It allows us to one-shot body shot on certain Guardians at five resilience or less with certain weapons. That's right, Arbalest is still working with Gurf Falcon. And despite other exotics being shredded after Bungie goes in to fix them, Gurf Falcon is still a phenomenal exotic. Today, though, we wanted to go beyond our one-shot armless build and instead start looking at different archetypes and different resilience values and where it begins to really work. This is going to be kind of a girthy video, so sit back, and if you're a hunter main, slap that like button because everything we're going to go over today is going to make you even more toxic than you already naturally are. Now, before we actually dive into testing, there is one major change with Gurf Falcons we need to go over that changes many of the weapons you can effectively use with it. The exotic part for Gurf Falcons reads, your weapons gain a bonus of damage briefly after you emerge from being invisible. And when you're invisible and you defeat a combatant using a finisher, you and nearby allies gain a reserve overshield and improved class ability regeneration. Now, these overshields can actually be deployed by just using your class ability, which is useful inside of PvE. However, we're mainly focusing on PvP here. And actually, we just had a build video with Gurf Falcons and Collective Obligation. Feel free to check that one out. That really takes advantage of Void 3.0. And both of those have fantastic synergy. With that being said, the part there, your weapons gain bonus damage briefly after you emerge from being invisible. This buff does not activate the moment you shoot and become visible. There is a slight delay between your invisibility, the activating, and you receiving the buff to your weapons. Now, Bungie actually updated our UI, and you can actually see it there at the bottom left end of the screen when a weapon buff is actually being applied, or in this case, an exotic armor weapon buff. So a good visual indicator of this. However, with that being said, this does mean that certain weapon types will not be viable with Gurf Falcons. Granted, it is possible to just get the buff if you wait for your invisibility to run out or throw an ability or do something else to actually drop that invisibility but that is just more time added to each engagement and the idea here is to be able to spring directly out of invisibility and have super deadly ttk values now this buff is actually a 15 percent buff which is stronger than that of radiant which is 10 percent and to kind of wrap your head around this think of this as like a mobile empowering rift now weapons to avoid when it comes to synergizing with girl falcons includes things like snipers shotguns bows and even glaives and i know glaives you can kind of utilize it but you notice these are like one shot weapons there's nothing deactivating in this when you're coming out of it all of these weapons will not receive that damage buff on your first shot and if you're wanting to take advantage of invisibility with them you might as well just be using omni oculus or another exotic with invis synergy now weapons that we're kind of on the fence about grenade launchers the reason why gls are kind of on the fence is they either kill in one hit or they don't there is a small delay between coming out of invisibility before the damage buff is even included but you do have to have enough distance between you and the target that means if you're too close it won't work granted most people are swapping to another weapon or using an ability to secure the kill after firing a GL shot. The point is, this doesn't necessarily equate to easier one-hit kills with grenade launchers. Now, submachine guns. SMGs can actually be really decent with this exotic. You're coming out of invis, you're amplifying that damage by 15%. SMGs are also really, really good. Think of this as like a way to add more forgiveness across the board for your submachine guns. But considering how fast TTK values are for SMGs, you really have to weigh the pros and cons of using Gurf Falcon over other exotic armor pieces, especially if you're looking to close the gap, which you're normally doing with a submachine gun. Now, weapons that actually work really, really well with Gurf Falcons. Trace rifles, hand cannons, fusion rifles, and linear fusion rifles. Now, we bring up trace rifles because they just got a stability buff. We will be testing them in more depth next week. They can hold their own in mid-range engagements. The limiting factor here is, of course, it's a special weapon. Now, invisibility is removed as soon as you start charging a fusion rifle. So that's why we have fusion rifles in here, as well as linears. The main takeaway from this for fusions is that you're going to be able to secure the kill with fewer bolts on certain archetypes. Hand cannons are also really decent. 180s actually see a faster TTK value at 9 resilience or less. You can 3 crit guardians with 180s up from 3 crits 1 body, which is significant. We're talking a 0.67 time to kill value. 120s and 140 round per minute hand cannons have a little more forgiveness, but again, no drop there in TTK. Overall, there's not like a ginormous change here in hand cannons outside of 180s. Now, the best weapons that actually synergize with Gurf Falcons includes auto rifles, scout rifles, pulse rifles, in sidearms. Now we're going to talk about scout rifles real quick. 150s can actually kill in one body two crits at 10 resilience with Gurf Falcons. And if you're shooting from invis, you need to hit the body first. So both of those follow-up shots do maximum damage. You can even operate with something like Jade Rabbit for this. Granted, 150s can already three crits at 0.8 seconds. And even though this is nice for 150s, keep in mind 150s did just get a nerf and Jade Rabbit got a nerf as well. Now 180s, you can actually three tap at non-resilience or less. And with something like box breathing on Hung Jury, you can two crit one body 
breathing at 10 resilience. Now, personally, I love box breathing. I know you have to aim down sights to activate it, but this actually synergizes pretty well with invisibility, considering that aiming down sights and locking yourself in a lane normally exposes you. When you're invisible, though, you are more difficult to spot, allowing you to proc box breathing a little easier. So if you have that hung jury roll, enjoy it. 200 round per minute scouts can actually three crit one body down from four crits, just more forgiveness here. And 260s can actually four crits at 10 resilience up from four crits one body. This actually drops our TTK value down from 0.93 to 0.7. So if you enjoy rapid fire scouts, we recommend this roll. By the way, I actually rounded up there. It's actually 0.69 time to kill value. Nice auto rifles, 360s. How many of you are actually breaking out 360s? Not many. High impact auto rifles actually get a TTK drop though from six crits at 0.8 seconds to five crits at 0.67. Granted, this is on eight resilience or less. That's actually the vast majority of guardians outside of my knucklehead titans who like to rock max resilience. 450s. Listen, 450s have been feeling really, really good. I was actually playing with Ammon here recently. We're going to be re-reviewing a lot of different 450s, including the new ones that drop with Festival of the Laws or quote-unquote new ones. Precision frame auto rifles, though, got a buff. And with Girl Falcons, this actually drops the TTK down from five crits to two body at 0.8 seconds to now five crits, one body at 0.67 seconds at 10 resilience. So not only you're able to get that 0.67 TTK, you're able to do it on max resilience guardians, which is impressive. Now, 600 round per minute auto rifles, also known as adaptives, also get a drop in TTK down from nine crits at 0.8 seconds to now eight crits at 0.7 seconds. So might break out that hard light. 720s, rapid fires, also get a nice TTK bump down from 10 crits at 0.77 seconds to nine crits at 0.67 seconds. And by the way, this is also at 10 resilience. Across the board, you can see where this is really benefiting these automatic type weapons. Now, moving on to pulse rifles, 540s, 450s, and 340s. Guys, we're going to talk about lightweight aggressives and rapid fires, as well as high impacts here. They mainly see minor changes to TTK values, meaning overall minuscule benefits. Granted, we were actually using Jurassic Green with Gurf Falcons, and it was nice, but no major change in TTKs. Forgiveness, yes, but that's about it. But for 390s, this is where things get interesting. Adaptive pulse rifles actually benefit the most here from Gurf Falcons Harbrick, allowing them to two burst in six crits, bringing the overall TTK down from 0.93 seconds to 0.6 seconds. Now, granted, we have a couple things contributing to this. Adaptive pulse rifles just got a buff. You've got weapon types like Yesteryear, which we reviewed way back when. That's performing better. Syncopation is also looking good. But there's other adaptives that actually will be working very nicely here with Gurf Falcon's Harbrick. Again, though, two bursting sounds easy, but it is difficult, really, especially with like strafing and stuff in the game. So even though on paper this looks really, really good, it's not as achievable as you may think. Now, sidearms. Sidearms actually received a huge buff to their aim assist at longer ranges, making them a great option for PvP now. Things like Trespasser and Drain are dominating the Crucible. Something to take note of, though, Forerunner was not included in the auto-aim buff. Granted, it's already so good to begin with. But things like Trespasser, Traveler's Chosen, Drain, Brigand's Law, Cryostesia, Devil's Ruin, all of these synergize so well with Gurf Falcons. Now, I'm not going to dive into TTK values for sidearms because they're just so fast to begin with and they're just so spamtastic. Instead, I want us to actually veer to a weapon that you may have forgotten about that synergizes the best. May not be the deadliest, but synergizes the best with Gurf Falcons. And that is none other than Rat King. Fellas, we've been using this build now all week long, running Night Stalker, going Invis, getting a kill with Rat King, getting that damage bump, and then turning around, going Invis with Rat King again. By the way, if you have the Exotic Catalyst, you're topping off your health. Fellas, this is a beautiful build. So let's just run through some things. Aspects, we're rocking Vintage Step, which allows us to dodge and go invisible, taking advantage of Gurf Falcon. Again, though, our dodge is just one of three ways we have to disappear with this build. We also have Trapper's Ambush, where we can activate Quick Fall to spin our melee charge and dive to the ground, creating a large smoke cloud on impact, which then dissipates. This makes us invisible as well as our allies. For our fragments, we have Echo Provision, where damaging targets with your grenades grant melee energy. Echo of Dilation, while crouch, you sneak faster and gain enhanced radar resolution. Echo of Persistence, which actually buffs invisibility, overshield, and devour, essentially increasing the duration. Now, Echo Provision actually feeds back into our smoke, which is our second source of invisibility. So between this and Gambler's Dodge, we should always have our melee available. Echo of Dilation actually helps us with general awareness, sneaking around, moving around, especially when you're crouched, guys. This is really, really nice. And considering that we're going invisible so much, we're taking advantage of being off our enemy's radar, but at the same time, our radar is being enhanced. Now, the Echo of Persistence fragment actually increases the duration here of invisibility up to seven seconds, as opposed to the normal five, which is really, really nice. Now, Rat King, it should be obvious that this synergizes the best here, considering you literally go invisible with this sidearm. Now, if you actually have a fire team of Rat King users, you could run around and get Rat Pack and literally have more DPS with this exotic. It literally shoots faster the more people are running Rat King around you. But reloading immediately after
after a kill grants a brief period of invisibility and you have the catalyst it also gives you health this is our third method of going invisible and every time this happens when we're coming out of invis we are getting that buff there to damage it's like having omni oculus without actually using omni oculus it's funny because bungie actually nerfed omni oculus and we're like yay good job bungie you're dealing with invisible hunters and they're like yo here's another even better exotic not only does the exotic catalyst give you health though it also grants you increased aim assist in recoil direction making the weapon even more manageable to use this 15 percent damage buff is just enough to just add on even more forgiveness here to racking normally requiring four crits to reach that ttk value of 0.6 seconds now i can get that ttk value and three crits one body and again the beautiful thing about going invisible is it literally breaks the line of sight for most of your enemies which bamboozles them especially with guardians that have bad eyes myself included now there's a number of ways in which you can have higher uptime even more so with your invisibility rocking two utility kickstart mods can work that way every time you dodge you're getting more and more of your class ability energy back and even though we're not necessarily in a double primary meta considering we just talked about 390 round per minute pulse rifles and how they perform a girl falcon you can synergize that together i was actually rocking jurassic green here though and was running double primary in multiple games and this was performing very nicely overall rat king was meant for this exotic again still might not be the deadliest because there is so many options here that synergize so well with girl falcon but i can't help but throw this together simply because rat king has never been meta but with the most recent sidearm buff and the inclusion of girl falcons we had to break rat king out one thing i do want to note i know rangefinder has not been nerfed in the game yet it did not make it in the most recent sandbox change with that being said that day will come rangefinder will be dealt with meaning those rangefinder sidearms that are performing so well now they too will be dealt with so keep that in mind sidearms like rat king or even other sidearms like travis chosen devil's ruin exotics that don't necessarily have rangefinder on them they're only going to go up more in value after that change goes live so guys that is girth falcons and our breakdown of everything it synergizes really nicely with again if you want to check out our girth falcon build with collective obligation a link to that will be in the description below and by the way if you want to come and watch us live we're constantly testing out shenanigans trying to find the best builds the meta all the icky icky and nasty inside of destiny that is literally our goal week in and week out so come by our twitch and check us out fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right Thank you